All right, all right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday evening. Thanks for joining us for some general knowledge trivia. My name is Ali with Baker Tricks Entertainment. I'm here with my wife, Gina, and our dogs, Taco and Pierre. We're going to get into this game here in just a moment. Before we do, though, make sure that you've joined our online game website, uh, I think the link on our Facebook was incorrect earlier, so if you're sitting out there uh, and the date does not match at the top uh, correctly, make sure you switch. You want to go to online.begatrix.com and put in the code TRICKS3. I'm also just going to post the link right here in the chat, so if you need it, you can click right on it. Once you get to the website, it's going to ask you for a few pieces of information. The only one that's required is the first one. That is the name that you want to go by in tonight's competition. Uh, the second and the third is asking for the city and the state that you're joining us from, if you'd like to let us know. We always enjoy seeing where people are playing trivia from tonight. Last but not least, your Bag of Tricks loyalty program number, if you have one. If you don't, you can sign up for free by clicking the link in the description of this video. If you do, make sure you put it in there and click on go once you see this screen you're all set there's nothing else that you need to do you can just hang tight while we wait for everyone to join we'll go over how the game is played and we will get this started here in just one moment all right all right all right let me come back on the screen so welcome thanks everybody for being here beautiful friday night we're excited for tonight's trivia uh we will be back next week with a whole bunch of fun stuff coming up uh, so please join us next week. I know a lot of you have already seen that we will have on Monday night our monthly trivia night with the Fountaindale Public Library. Uh, this, <gasps> bless you. Sorry, thanks. No, don't apologize. I'm just we all gotta sneeze. I breeze the couch. <laughs> uh, this Monday is our trivia night with the Fountaindale Public Library. It is Chicago sports trivia. Uh, so certainly for some of you that aren't in the Chicago area, this might be a little tougher. Uh, but those of you in this area that are sports fans, we're doing that Monday at 7. We'll be back Monday at 9 with General Knowledge Trivia. And then we'll have some other fun stuff coming up next week as well. Now, in the meantime, if you are fully vaccinated and looking to go out and have some fun in the Chicagoland area, don't sleep on our in-person events. Uh, we have about between 10 and 13 events going on every single week right now between Tuesday and Tuesday. And Thursday evening. We also have some events on Sundays. If you're a weekend getter, uh, you want to go out to Noon Whistle Brewing. Uh, those happen uh, on occasional Sundays. You can find all of the information about all of our events on both our Facebook and our website. Um, so whichever is more comfortable to you to check it out, find an event, check it out. A lot of great breweries, a lot of good restaurants that you can hang out at, drink some good beer, eat some good food, and play some awesome trivia. So with all of that said, that's for the future. Right now, we're hanging out online. So thank you all for being here. Um, tonight's event, completely free to play. Uh, if you're interested, we do have these links in the corner down here. If you'd like to leave a donation, you can send a tip uh, directly to us here at Vega Tricks to say, uh, you know, way to go. Great job. I don't know. Whatever you want to say. Just put it in the comment when you send a tip. Uh, we really appreciate those donations. It allows us to continue hosting these online events for as long as we possibly can into the future as things start to open back up uh we have no plans to cancel online trivia uh as long as people are still coming out and hanging out and as long as we can pay for the platforms that we're using to do it so thank you guys so much that have sent any tips in the past or anybody that sends one tonight we really appreciate it uh now with that said i'm going to jump up into the corner and remind you very quickly you do need to join the online game website online.begatrix.com put in the code tricks three that's the kicker i had it wrong on the facebook page earlier tricks three put in that information click go make sure it says the game will begin shortly and you are all set tonight's game 
is general knowledge trivia. So these questions are about anything and everything. Some of them will be simple, some of them will be tough, but we are all here playing for Taco Bucks tonight. If you win first, second, or third place, you're gonna win some Taco Bucks. That's our Begatrix online currency. You can then use in turn to redeem for some real life prizes. Uh, but the real the real prize are the friends you made along the way. Where's Jen Sterna? Always, always. she always say that? Uh, so thank you all for being here tonight. We're going to dive into this. These questions, as I mentioned, general knowledge. Some of them will be simple. Some of them will be tough. The first round that we're about to do is multiple choice, which means I'll ask you a question. I'll start your question timer. Once the timer begins, you'll see four options appear on your screen. Now, once those four options pop up, you want to click the answer that you believe is correct as quickly as possible, because the sooner you lock in your answer, the more points you'll earn if you're correct. If you're wrong, you don't lose any points. So even if you're not sure of the answer, do make sure to take a guess, because no harm, no loss, no foul. Uh, all right. Uh, with that said, we are going to put the first question up on the screen because this question is just our practice question. And we can let you look at Mario Lopez and a leotard for a few minutes here. So as you see at the top, you can see the question. You can see the question number. You can see there will be 25 seconds on the clock and it will be worth a maximum of 150 points. Now, I don't think I've mentioned this. Actually, I did. The sooner you lock in your answer, the more points you'll earn out of 150 points maximum. So... This question doesn't count for any points, so don't worry about that. We're just here to have some fun and learn how it works. Question number one, our practice question. What is the name of your host today? Is my name Screech, Slater, Zach, or Ali? Thank you, Kim, so much for the donation. Uh, a social in the memo, so we'll do a social for Kim. Oh, cheers. cheers. Oh, Happy cheers. Friday. Happy Friday. Thanks, Kim. All right, everybody is in. I clicked the wrong button. Uh, one person each said Screech and Slater. Two people said Zach. Thanks, I was never that popular in high school. 14 people correctly said Ali. Great job. Mario's unitard is a little unsettling. Hey, I'm here for it. Shout out, Alter. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Bobby are here as a team tonight under a new name. Hey, Christiane and Bobby. Can't wait to see your new name. Yeah, our friends from Canada. Great to have you both here. All right. Question number two. First real question of the evening. The theme park Disneyland is in which U.S. state? Where are you going to if you want to go to Disneyland? Is it North Carolina, Florida, California, or Virginia? Everybody's in. Uh, yeah, correct answer. We have Disney World in Florida, but 19 of you correctly said California. California. Great job. Question number three. Vatican City was founded in which year? Oh, my God. I know. Vatican yeah. City. This is why it's a multiple choice. Vatican City founded in what year? Was it 1879, 1899, 1919, or 1929? Don't get me wrong, I like this question. Thank you. Vatican City, a very, very small country. Only a couple of square miles wide. <sighs> Gonna, <le> <laughs> Gonna need the Lord's help on this question. I'm sure you got it, Kathleen. Don't worry. Three people said 1879. Seven people said 1899. Seven people said 1919. And four people said 1929. On February the 11th, 1929! It's not even 100 years old yet. Great year. What a great year. Oh, shit. Yeah, good things weren't happening here. 
and they got the Vatican City over there. It's literally buildings made of gold while the stock market was crashing here. So that's cool. Question number four. <laughs> Which of the following musical instruments would you not find in a classic mariachi band? Which of the following instruments would you not typically see in a classic mariachi band? Is it a trumpet, the bass guitar, a violin, or a flute? No, Emma was trying to make us go faster, Julie. She was like, hurry, my mom's coming. I've been looking forward to Friday since Monday. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Oh, God. I like this gift. Thanks. It's sometimes my struggle is finding a gift that doesn't give away the answer, but is still relevant. I couldn't just put up a gift of a mariachi band because then it would be the instruments. Four people said the bass guitar. 17 people said the flute. The correct answer is the flute. No flute in a classic mariachi band. All right, question number five is coming up. Brabdingnagian. Brabdingnagian is a word meaning gigantic that comes from what classic work of English literature? Is it Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, The Canterbury Tales, Gulliver's Travels or The Tempest. Brobdingnadjian. Yeah, you're right, Derek. That's fair. February times were still good in, in the United States in 1929. Was it around October, right? What was Black Friday? 1929. October 29th. Black Tuesday. My bad. Black Friday is our crazy shopping day for some reason now. Uh, October 29th, Black Tuesday, 1929. That's an easy way to remember it. 29th of October, 1929. Yeah. Good call, though, Derek. You're right. All right, everybody's in. Four people said Schultz's The Canterbury Tales. One person said Shakespeare's The Tempest. 16 people said, I don't know what accent that guy had, Gulliver's Travels. Gulliver's Travels. Jonathan Swift. Sounds English, right? Do you think he was English? Like Elvish, almost. This is how I find things. Oh, he looks he looks old. Anglo-Irish satirist. Yeah, English-Irish. All right. Uh, that's question five. So here's our first look at the standings, which means also a look at the pups. Oh, what a cutie all sprawled out. All right. Here we go. Currently in first, Emma. In second, S.F. Curtis. Third, no longer cuddling, Kathleen. Are you okay? Oh, Is everything no. okay? No Jeez. puppies? No penis? No penguins? That's okay. Uh, in fourth, there's a tie between D. Ashman and J. Mo. Six is the Angelica's Artie and Winnie. Seventh is Julie. Eighth, Team Cream. Ninth, Olivia with only one exclamation point. That's all right. We're still happy you're here, Olivia. Tenth, Team Biggs. Eleventh, Miss LaRocca and Snowball and Mia the Pups. Twelfth, Munchies at Tiffany's. I like that. Thirteenth is Merton Lerny. Fourteenth, a poo poo and a pee pee. Fifteenth is Mitchie's. Sixteenth, the Fish Fam. Seventeenth, Steffi Star. Eighteenth, Kim. Nineteenth, K.A. slash Bobby. I wonder which team that is. Twentieth is It's Over Banana Ken. And 21st, Finland. But only if I can have the moon, too. All right. Uh, yeah, Derek, I'm with you on that. I'm with you. I'm good. No penis, no puppies, no banquet. Glad you're good. <laughs> oh, I love it. Black Friday is literally the opposite of Black Tuesday. Yeah, you're all completely correct. All right, here we go. We're moving on. Question number six. Sorry, I'm yelling. What Michael J. Fox film was largely responsible for the extremely dangerous 1980s craze of car surfing? A lot of very not smart people took to car surfing after watching what film? Was it Teen Wolf, The Secret to My Success, Back to the Future, or Doc Hollywood? Uh, everybody is in. 
Six people said Teen Wolf. One person said Secret to My Success. Uh, 13 people said Back to the Future. Let me see if I can find this. Yeah, no, I'm not going to be. Well, this is kind of close. Uh, the correct answer is Teen Wolf. Teen Wolf. It wasn't Back to the Future. You might be thinking of him skitching on the back of the car with a skateboard uh, or maybe riding the hoverboard, but Teen Wolf is the correct answer here. Six of you got points for this. Oh, shit. Uh, when you said Steffi Star, it was very Tom Haverford of you. Thanks, Steph. Oh, it's pronounced kebabi, like kebab. Well, now I'm hungry. Thanks oh. a lot. Appreciate it. Ooh, a kebab. Now I want a kebab. Oh, there was a place, Steph remembers this, when we worked in St. Charles called Just Kebab. They had more than that. Why would they call themselves <laughs> Just Kebabs if they're going to oh, serve more than had, Just like, Kebabs? Rice and hummus and pilaf. Oh, gosh, I would love some kebabs. Now I'm super hungry, and this is all of your fault. It's okay. It's my fault. I haven't eaten dinner. Question seven. The 1981 film Mommy Dearest is based on an autobiographical book by the adopted daughter of what famous actress? Mommy Dearest based on a book by the adopted daughter of what famous actress? Was it Judy Garland, Joan Crawford, Lana Turner, or Faye Dunaway? I love this question. This is quoted often in our childhood. Nice. Kathleen had kebabs tonight. Dang it. John says, haven't seen Teen Wolf. Wonder if that'll show up on the best of the 80s list. Ah, uh, probably not. Oh, we need to get on the 40s. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody's in. 15 people correctly said Joan Crawford. I, she doesn't sound like that, but Joan Crawford. Question number eight. The largest denomination Federal Reserve note ever issued for public circulation... <laughs> I should put in the USA was the blank note. What was the largest Federal Reserve note? Whatever, what was the largest piece of currency ever issued for public circulation in the United States? Was it 500, 1,000, 5,000, or 10,000? Today at work, um, the skip reminded me, a man said to me, he he gave me cash, and he said he missed when he could, like, lick his Lick his finger. And I was like, well, that's gross, even outside of a pandemic, but sure. <laughs> I've always hated touching cash. It is so dirty. That's fair. Ugh. It is super dirty. It's so dirty. I don't think I thought about it until you told me. I mean, because I've always worked for tips, but. Oh, fair. Oh, yeah. Oh, I never actually looked up. Okay, so eight people said 1,000. Three people said 5,000. Nine people said 10,000. Nine people were correct, believe it or not. And the trick here is public circulation. The, the largest bill was a $10,000 bill. Uh, and I just Googled the wow. The portrait was President Lincoln's Secretary of the Treasury, Salmon P. Chase, or Salmon, if you want to sound crazy. Salmon P. Chase. Um, now, there were much larger bills. There was a $100,000 bill that featured Woodrow Wilson on it, but that was only used to transfer wealth between banks. So that wasn't in public circulation. That was just for banks to transfer wealth. But this, you know, uh, if you had $10,000 to your name, you could have grabbed one of these. Uh, question number nine. Uh, somebody mentioned this. I might have to give some credit to Stephanie H or Jess A. Somebody mentioned this stat, and I looked it up later. Uh, when the Oscar nominations were announced this year on March 15th, what actress became the first person ever nominated for an Academy Award and a Golden Raspberry, also known as a Razzie, for the same performance? One person was... Uh, <laughs> Nominated for an Academy Award and a Razzie for the same performance for the first time ever. Who was it? Was it Glenn Close, Amanda Seyfried, Frances McDormand, or Maria Bakalova? It was Steph. Thanks, Steph. Could you imagine trying to spend that? They're always leery of even 20s. Yeah, I love like uh, when I worked at Starbucks, we would have a sign that said like, listen, you know, we can't break $100 bills. 
And people would walk in at like 6.30. We opened at 6. They would walk in at 6.30 and want to break a $100 bill. And I would be like, my dude, I don't have a change for that. Even a $50 bill. Can you imagine walking into somewhere with a $10,000 bill? Like, uh, can, can I get change for this? I want to use the vending machine. <laughs> Everybody's in the correct answer. 13 people got it. Glenn Close. Glenn Close. <laughs> My dude, I can't break a 10,000. Yeah, exactly. Great job, everybody. Question number 10. What was Samantha's job on Sex and the City? Do you remember this? What was yeah. Samantha's job on Sex and the City? Was she a therapist, a caterer, a public relations professional, or a talent agent? Samantha. I want to go to the Zimbabwean strip club just to make it one mi rain one million dollar bills on stage. <laughs> I'm such a Samantha. <laughs> hey, Chris, I didn't even know you were out there. Welcome, Barbians. All right, everybody's in. Two people each said therapist and caterer. Four people said talent agent. 13 people correctly <laughs> having sex with the city. 13 people correctly said public relations professional. Pub I think I've mentioned this show on before being like a 12-year-old a boy when this was on, what was it, HBO or Showtime? And like, you remember TV Guide would rotate through and you see sex in the city and you're like, yeah, let me put that on. I'm like, what the fuck am I watching right now? I mean, there is a lot of I mean, that enough for a 14 yeah, there's a bunch of women talking to each other and drinking Cosmos on that show. It's a great show, but as a 12 year old boy watching the the title flow by on the TV Guide channel, yeah, no, I was you're right. you're I was good. misled. I was oh, misled. Smith Jared, yeah. Uh, Maybe when Smith cut his hair. Uh, I was a full on adult when this came out. Yeah, no, I was like, uh, I had the wriggly lines on my TV. I was a senior in high school and. Lines. <laughs> nice. Emma's in first, Jamo's in second, Julie's in third. Everybody else, take a look, see where you're at. East Alice? Where is East Alice? Is there an East Alice? Is there a West Alice? It has not aged well. Yeah, I believe that. Nothing really has. I, <laughs> Kathleen, I was a homeowner. Yeah, no, I was a room borrower in my parents house question number 11 while 30 rock became a legendary sitcom what aaron sorkin series which debuted the very same time lasted just 22 episodes 30 rock went on to become a legendary show while an aaron sorkin series which debuted the same season lasted only 22 episodes which show am i referring to is it good night beantown late night lineup boston legal or studio 60 on the sunset strip Oh, my guy. Bradley Whitford. There is only a West Alice. Okay. I knew there was a joke in there, but I'm not smart enough. I don't know enough about Wisconsin. Three people said goodnight Beantown. Seven people said Boston Legal. I think that was on a little bit longer. The correct answer, ten people said Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip. Bradley Whitford, Amanda Pete, Matthew Perry, Sarah Paulson, Stephen Weber. Looking back at this, D.L. Hughley. I can. I mean, with that lineup, you think it lasts longer? Question number twelve. True. The sport, in quotations, before anybody yells at me, of beer pong originated within fraternities. <laughs> bless you. Sorry. Of what university? <laughs> bless you. Or Sorry. college in the nineteen fifties? What university or college gave us beer pong back in the nineteen fifties? Was it Georgetown, Dartmouth, <laughs> Harvard, or Brown? Sorry, everyone. You know, people gotta sneeze. Sneezers gotta sneeze. I'm allergic. It might be me. No, it's not. It's this beer I'm drinking. <laughs> I'll drink it if you're allergic. No. It's worth it. <laughs> Jess, I am here to yell at, you. yell at you. Four people said Georgetown. Seven people said Harvard. One person said Brown. Nine people correctly said Dartmouth. 
Dartmouth College. I came across this. I was interested. I had no idea. But I guess it had to originate somewhere. All right, question 13. The New York Yankees acquired which of the following legendary players in a trade? Only one is correct. Which of these players were acquired in a trade by the New York Yankees? Was it Derek Jeter, Babe Ruth, Mickey Mantle, or Joe DiMaggio? Here's the Joe DiMaggio. <laughs> oh, thanks, John Jay. All right, everybody's in. Four people said DiMaggio. Three people said Mickey Mantle. Thirteen people said the Bambino, the Sultan of Swat, Babe Ruth. This gave us the supposed curse of the Bambino uh, from 1919. The Red Sox wouldn't win again for 86 years. Uh, you know, blame it on the babe. All right, question number... Oh, who posted this delicious-looking sandwich? Question number <laughs> 14. Sandwiches? What? <laughs> In 1982, the song Mountain Music helped propel what iconic country music band on their way to stardom. I have it sung vinyl. You would not like it. Ni 1982, <laughs> Mountain Music. Thank propel you. which iconic music band on their way to stardom? Was it the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, the Oak Ridge Boys, Alabama, or the Judds? Grew up in Tosa. I haven't heard that since Marquette. Wait, what's Tosa? I give up. I'm just going to stick to asking questions. Three people said the Judd. Six people said the Oak Ridge Boys. Twelve people said Alabama. <laughs> what should we name our band? Where do we live, Rick? Alabama. Oh, my God. Let's go with Alabama. Alabama's the correct answer. Question 15. Which of the following horror films, horror films, was not based on an existing novel? Which of the following films was not adapted from a novel? Was it Psycho, The Omen, Hellraiser, or Silence of the Lambs? All right, everybody's in. Six people said Psycho. Five people said The Omen. One person said Silence of the Lambs. Ten people said Hellraiser. A lot of people thought it was Hellraiser. Correct answer is The Omen. The Omen. Hellraiser uh, based on the Hellbound Heart. Uh, psycho, Psycho, Silence of the Lambs. The Omen. Uh, original screenplay, I guess. Question 16. Munich's famous Oktoberfest starts in... In what month each year? I don't know what that accent was. I don't know anybody you know that could it's identify. Very, uh, <laughs> maybe a combination. Ah, Munich's Oktoberfest starts in what month each year? Is it August, yeah, September, dance. October, or November? <laughs> Munich's Oktoberfest. <laughs> I know Wawa's an East Coaster. I just don't know what the fuck Tosa is, so I'm going with what I can identify here. Wawa. Yeah, Jess, I try to stay um, very chill with the horror movie gifts, unless it's horror movie trivia, in which case, uh, no holds barred. So this one is always set so that it ends, I believe, in the, the second weekend of uh, October or the ninth. is something weird. Uh, but it always starts in September. September is the correct answer. All right, everybody's in. Let's take a look at the standings. Currently in first is Emma. Second, the Angelica's already in Winnie. And third, S.F. 
Curtis, everybody else, take a look. See where you're at. We're going to get into the next round here in just a second. It's going to switch things up. The next round is going to be a picture round. I will explain that in just a second. Moving into the next round. As I mentioned, this is going to be a picture round. And how that works is I will be asking you a question. Rather than just coming up with it, you're going to have to look at the picture on the screen and try to identify what I'm asking from you. So each of these will be worth 250 points. You get all the points if you're right. You get none of the points if you're wrong. You don't lose anything if you're wrong, though. This next round uh, is all from one category. I'm going to show you a picture of a famous person. Uh, it's just a famous historical person, somebody who's done something uh, to make them relevant throughout the ages. So all you have to do is name the individual I'm showing you. Some of these are easy. Some of these are tough. 250 points apiece. Here we go. Question number 17. Who is this? That's it. That's the question. Who are we looking at? Who's this nice guy here? Nice guy. <laughs> He probably wasn't very nice. Actually, I've heard many times that he was not very nice. I'm sure many very brilliant artists were horrible people. Yeah. Pictures of Ali being attacked with fear and sadness. Ah. Uh, All right, I'm happy about the only one's ooh, allergies. tree alive. pollen. Unfortunately, <laughs> I think mine's beer I'm drinking. <laughs> S.F. Curtis, Baba Wawa. <laughs> Sorry, Stephanie, I just saw that. Uh, this is not Taft. It's not Stalin. Great guesses. This is a social, though. This is Alfred Hitchcock. That wasn't his accent either. <laughs> you know what? All right. Oh, I forgot I have whiskey over here. That's dangerous. Question number 18. Name this historical figure. Imagine if his name was just right there on the placard. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Everybody's in. <coughs> Bless oh, you. Thanks. That was actually Taco. Somebody said Alphonse Capone. Great job. The correct answer, another drink, Al Capone. This is not Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, he had a more uh, slimmer face, a little more hair, and more body parts within him. Cheers, everybody. Question number 19. Name this famous historical figure. Do you know this one? Yes. Gina knows it. Don't quit your day job. That's funny, Derek, because this is my day job and I get to do accents. Joke's on you. Who said that? Derek. Oh. As bad as my accents are, this is, day and night job. This is my day and my night job. I don't have any other job. I just get to sit here and get drunk and do horrible accents. All right, everybody's in. It's not Audrey Hepburn. This is Catherine Hepburn. Catherine Hepburn. Great job. Question 20. Name this famous historical figure. All right, this is not Albert Einstein. This is Mark Twain. Mark Twain. Almost all of you got it, so another social cheers. Last one, question 21. Who is this famous historical figure? You know this one? I don't know. 
I think you do, but you don't know that you know. Wait, I do. Yep. Yeah. Gina got it. So far, nobody else I'm has gotten it. I'm ashamed that I didn't get rid of her. <gasps> Is nobody going to get it except for Gina? Okay, one, one person got it. One single person. So the trick here is this. Oh, two people. Uh, wait, where is that at? Oh, no, it's there. Uh, the correct answer is Pablo Picasso. The star of Gremlins 2, the new batch. Charlie Chaplin, Mussolini, Stalin, Mussolini, Papillon, Hitler. <laughs> Dahmer, somebody's stuck on Dahmer. This is Pablo Picasso. You probably recognize him when he was older, his bald head uh, and his nice little sandals going around town. Uh, this is Pablo Picasso, though. All right. Uh, yeah, he looks like a ladies' man to me. I, I'd give him my Artist number. Artist man. All right, here we go. Here are the standings after that much. The Angelica, Artie's, and Winnie currently in first. Emma in second. Munchies at Tiffany's in third. Everybody else, take a look, see where you're at. We're going to switch things up here in just a moment. Good job, Veronica. Yay, Veronica. Saw John's comment there. Didn't recognize him not emotionally <laughs> abusing a woman. I was like, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Me. But, you know. Tale as old as time. Tale as old as time. Artists are all beasts. I mean, <laughs> it's true. I'm not saying, yeah. <laughs> Just uh, get on the bed over there. Lay there naked. I'm going to paint you. Can I bring you to a bar in Paris and drink absinthe with you? Um, sure, of course. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> we... <laughs> Happy Friday, everybody. We have one round left, 10 questions left. These questions are random general knowledge questions. The only difference from the first round is that you have to type the answer in like we've been doing for the picture round. So no... Um, no multiple choice answers to choose from. So here we go. I will say, I think this this final round's kind of tough tonight. So give it your best. Don't cheat. Don't Google. Don't look anything up. Keep it honest. Here we go. Question number 22. What mode of transport uh, includes parts called an envelope, a burner, and a basket? What mode of transport are you taking if your mode of transport includes parts called an envelope, a burner, and a basket? What's the name of the beer? Oh, you're typing it, huh? Um, oh, oh. It's right there. Dodging traffic. Dodging traffic. Coffee porter? I'm saying it right now. You got it. All right, everybody's in. It's not a plane, it's not a motorcycle, a locomotive, or a train. It is a hot air balloon. An envelope, a burner, and a basket. A hot air balloon. Great job. Question number 23. Triton is the largest natural satellite of which planet in our solar system? Oh, this gift. I ask, so if you guys ever wonder how I do my job... I come up with questions so that I can use specific gifts, gifts, uh, and I wrote, I write like space questions so that I can put in this gift. That's the whole thing. I love. There's so this cool. one, and then there's a, there's also a cat that floats around oh, too. Oh, I've seen that one too. Yeah. All right, everybody's in. You have a one in eight shot. Sorry, Pluto. Jupiter, seven people said. Neptune, seven people said. Four people said Matt, Saturn. Three people said Mars. Jupiter is always a good guess. It has like 400 satellite moons. The correct answer, though, is Neptune. Neptune. Julie, I watched Stowaway. I liked it. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised. Oh, you thought it was terrible. That's what fair. Is Stowaway? It's a Netflix film. Anna Kendrick and this other lady her. and this guy. Oh, and... Uh, Jin from Lost. Yeah, uh, he was in it. All right, question 24. What event 
What specific event caused Twitter servers to crash on June 25th, 2009? I wrote this in the English way. June 25th, 2009. What event caused Twitter servers to crash June 25th, 2009? Not Uranus. That's got some satellites. <laughs> yes, my anus is always funny. So many issues. Yeah, Julie, I've stopped taking issues with science movies. I just watch them to watch them. I feel you, though. Do you know the answer to this? All right. It was not the royal wedding. It was not a sports thing. It was Michael Jackson's death. Um, Michael Jackson's death. I saw it on TV. I where it was. Yeah, I didn't see it on Twitter. I heard it first on TV. Michael Jackson's death, June twenty fifth, two thousand nine. One of the first times that Twitter ever failed, ever came down. All right. Question twenty five. The pH scale runs from zero to what number? pH scale runs from zero to what number? Ooh, that's a fun question. <coughs> Bless you. I don't even have the energy to spell energy. 14. Yeah, basic. That is correct. 0 to 14. Very acidic to very basic. Great job. It's the last time we're going to look at the standings before we finish this out. Emma currently in first. SF Curtis in second. The Angelica is already in. Winnie in third. All right. Here we go. Question number 26. In Egyptian mythology... Who was the mother of Horus? In Egyptian mythology, who was the mother of Horus? Everybody's in. Sorry. Oh, you're good. Correct answer here is Isis. Isis. My sister named her cat this. Oh, Steph, I love that. Question number 27. What is the capital city of Slovakia? What is the capital city of Slovakia? You want to be starting something? Got to be starting something. What, did somebody say that song? Said it, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like why am I singing one? Maybe starting something right now. <laughs> All right. Somebody put kebabs. I wonder who that was. The correct answer, Bratislav. Bratislav. Question number 28. What is the third most common gas in the Earth's atmosphere after nitrogen and oxygen? What is the third most common gas in Earth's atmosphere after nitrogen and oxygen? Uh, gas. Whatever the question says.
I think there it's the same answer. Because the element that is the third most common is also a gas. No, it's okay. It's a good question. It's a good clarification. But in this case, I believe it happens to be the same. Uh, the correct answer, it's not carbon dioxide. It's not hydrogen. It is argon. It is argon. Going to change my username to never going to win. <laughs> I like it, Derek. Nerdiest question of the night. Thanks, Kathleen. All right, question 29. In which famous book would you be introduced to a boat called the Pequod? Oh, what book ooh. are you introduced not to a pizza, <laughs> but a boat? Pizza. I know. Good thing I'm ordering some pizza. <laughs> yes. Pequod's does take and bake in the burbs. Somebody said, Moby Dick, now I want pizza. Moby Dick, not the singer. My boy, Dick. <laughs> that sounds like a typo, but I'm here for it. My boy, Dick. Uh, Moby Dick. Mobutu Dick. Yes, a lot of typos here, but you're all getting points. Don't even worry about it. Mob's Dick. Yeah, that's fair. Moby Dick is the correct answer. Oh, this one was fun. Uh, okay, question number 30. In Einstein's famous theory, E equals MC squared, what does C represent? Here's another science question for you. E equals MC squared, what does C represent? You guys remember pogs? Do you have pogs? Oh, yes, but I just had like pogs that I thought were cute. Like I didn't play pogs. Yeah, fair. I had the Pogs. Um, I had lots of Pogs. And one of them, like a very common one, was E equals MC Hammer. And I had like, oh, the, yeah. that was like when I first started learning about E equals MC squared. And it was because I had the wrong thing. All right, here we go. Everybody's in. I'm pretty specific here. It's the speed of light. The speed of light. Question 31, final question, my friend. Who wrote the epic poems known as the Iliad and the Odyssey? Who wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey? Everybody's in. <laughs> Homer, parenthesis, not Simpson, not Simpson. Homer, no, not that one. I love it. All right. Let's take a look then. All we have to do right now are the final standings. Uh, now, before we go over the final standings, let me just remind you, next week we'll be back with some fun stuff. Uh, starting bright and early on Monday at 7 p.m., we will have Chicago Sports Trivia, sponsored by the Fountaindale Public Library. So don't miss that with us. We'll be back that evening with General Knowledge Trivia. The full schedule will be posted on Facebook. But again, if you're in the Chicagoland area and you're itching to go out and do something, do make sure to check out our Facebook page and our website. It's actually easier to see all the events on the website. You can literally just go to bagatrix.com slash events. Uh, there's a searchable calendar. Everything's a little bit more intuitive to see than on Facebook. Social. Oh, we have social? Oh, yeah. It, everybody, guys, a double social. You got to finish your drink. Oh, gosh. Actually, I'm almost done. You're almost done. Uh, all right. So with that said, here are the final standings this evening. In first, second, and third, Emma in first, SF Curtis in second, and the Angelicus, Artie, and Winnie in third. Congratulations, everybody. 
Thank you all for being here. Thank you to anybody that sent a tip or a donation tonight. We sincerely appreciate it. If I missed it, uh, I didn't call you out. Just know that I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Uh, and we look forward to more trivia with y'all in the near future soon. Until then, be safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Wash your damn hands. Bye.